Welcome everybody to the June already um, exhibition night. And uh, we'll get started and have Stuart Wilson, our director of judges, introduce our judges for tonight and then we'll get started. Oh, hi everybody. So our, our first judge I'd like to introduce tonight is Chris Broden. Chris, just uh, say hi so we see your, your, your screen light up there. Um, Hello. <laughs> there we go, hi. <laughs> Thanks so much, Chris, for being our judge tonight. My pleasure. Chris, Chris grew up traveling and at age 11 remembers taking his mom's twin lens camera to a five week summer camp in the mountains of North Carolina. Oh, I'd like to be there right now. It had just a single roll of, of uh, film with 12 exposures. Those 12 frames became the jewels of that summer. Since then, the, the quest to visually fill the frame has never stopped. Chris completed both a BA and MS in photography at Brooks Institute, uh, then returned to serve as a faculty member for over 20 years. He taught courses in digital photography, digital asset management, view camera, studio, zone system, fine art, and photographic theory. One of the highlights of his teaching career was the opportunity to spend five summers as a Brooks professor in Paris. And Chris has done a a, a wonderful presentation to us about that uh, is, is candid photography in Paris, which we thoroughly enjoyed. So thanks again, Chris, for being our judge. Thank you. Our, our next judge is George Rose. George, you want to just say hi hey. real quick? Hi there. There. Um, George began his long career as a photographer 50 years ago. Throughout the years, he has traveled a long and winding road through the elite world of popular music, film, news, politics, and sports, eventually leading him to California's wine country. In the 1970s and 80s, George served six years as a staff photographer for the LA Times. From 1982 to 96, he prowled the sidelines of the San Francisco 49ers and Oakland Los Angeles Raiders games as a photographer for the National Football League. He has received numerous awards for his photographs, as well as being nominated twice by the LA Times for a Pulitzer Prize. His vineyard photos have been used in numerous publications and calendars throughout the world of wine and has authored several books devoted to wine. George is a contributing photographer with Getty Images and is a former board member at the Wildling Museum of Art and Nature in the San Ynez Valley. So George, thank you very much for being our judge tonight. Thank you, my pleasure. And our, our club judge tonight is Judith Barrett. For Judith, photography has had been a part of her life even before she could talk. Her father, a commercial photographer, took a fo photograph of her that ended up in an ad in the newspaper. Fast forward 50 some years, when Canon released the D60 in 2002 with her first digital camera, a crop sensor with six megapixels, her passion for creating her own images began. Today, Judith still shoots with a Canon, now with a full frame sensor and 30 megapixels, but she credits improved results to her creativity and practice, not to the new equipment. Her goal is to continue learning in both straight photography and in compositing images. So thank you very much, Judith, for being our club judge. You're welcome. And I'll turn it back to Bill. Our first category is creative and concept conceptual editing. And uh, before we get started, there are no special assignments in this, um, this month's exhibition. This is a month when the expanded nature category is allowed. Um, creative conceptual editing starts with Agapanthus, and the critique is from Chris. I, I truly enjoyed this image. Um, and, and a lot of the images that I looked at here, I think are gonna be even more beautiful if they're printed. Um, and I'd love, I'd love to see this, this one printed. If I had to give a, a, a technical critique, I was a little intrigued why there was golden light in the center, but it was vignetted uh, on the right and left sides. And I just would think if it expanded just a little bit more, um, you would be able to see the, the stalks on the far right side. I love the, 
the complementary colors, the, 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 the yellow and the blue. Um, and, and I thought the texture um, of this image was um, very evocative. Um, it, it, it was beautiful and yet, yet haunting at the same time. Um, I gave it a score of eight, and that was just because of the vignetting seemed a teeny bit heavy uh, when I looked at the images or looked at the Lightroom files. Did Hold I on, are you there? Oh. Hello? Who you call? He must be um, mute. I'm talking to myself here. Um, <laughs> I was muted. I, thanks, uh, Chris. Um, Agapantha scored 23. All right. The next image is Escape, and the critique is from Judith. Oh, OK. Um, I like the colors. I looked at this, I can't tell you how many times. I uh, kept reading the word Escape, and I kind of get it, but to me, the figure is appears so stagnant and so cut out of his environment that I don't get a feeling of moving forward, um, which I think would add a lot to this image. Also, if it is indeed a, um, a web, I think the web webbing could be more prominent. OK. All right, thank you. Uh, escape scored 21. Our next image is Map of Wyoming, and the critique is from George. Well, first of all, I love taking something that is so familiar and um, turning it into an abstract. I'm, I'm not sure what the process is um, on this, but um, it clearly looks uh, like a map, um, but um, and possibly some kind of river or, or something, but the color in it is gorgeous. The pastel color, it's, uh, it could easily be, um, it could easily be some kind of a granite counter. Um, it has that uh, abstract look. So um, I really like this, this image and um, I'd love to know a little bit more about how it was made. Okay, thank you. A map of Wyoming scored 25. Right, the next image is Sticks and Stones. The critique is from Chris. I, I you know, this along with the, the Agapanthus, I think that's how you said it, to, to me had these wonderful kind of ethereal textural feelings. Um, uh, my one critique about this image though is, it is to, to me, more akin to a background um, th than it is than it is to an image. Just for the sole purpose, of, I find it difficult to find a subject. Um, I think there should be a place that the eye comes to rest within an image as we travel around. We want to go back, and I would agree that you know the the, the light cyan uh, blue area in the upper left could be. Uh, the, the the subject or the focus it just seems to lose its three-dimensional space and becomes a more of a two-dimensional image um, and that's why i kind of said a, it was more akin to a background texture now it's beautiful and and i think it could you know i could see a four foot by eight foot metal print in a contemporary home you know it could be sitting there on the wall on a white wall and it would it would be truly stunning um, but but as a photographic uh, piece i would say it, I feel it more as, as a background. So I gave it a, I gave it a seven. Okay, thank you. Um, Sticks and Stone scored 19. And the next image is Transformation. And the critique is from Judith. Well, I'm unsure of the process. I, what strikes me right off the bat is the beautiful composition the photographer has created. <clears throat> but I feel that the treatment that they gave it, and it kind of looks like solarization in a way to me, um, I would like to see the colors adjusted a bit because the yellows don't shine through. I think there's a lot of green that could be 
removed from that area. But other than that, I really enjoy the image. Hey, <clears throat> excuse me. Th thank you. Uh, transformation scored 19. Our next image is zoomed orchids. The critique is from George. Well, again, another another um, wonderful abstract. Um, I th I think it's um, there's no point of origin in this photo where you can look at and, and say this is where my eye needs to go. Um, it is um, obviously a little washed out. I would love to have seen a little bit more color, possibly even black. Um, it's uh, it's nice to to look at, but. Um, it just doesn't pop. Okay, thank you. Uh, Zoom to Orchids scored 19. So for the creative edit category, we have three accepted images. Agapanthos by Zoltan Pushkash. Escape, Carrie Topliff. And Map of Wyoming by Chris Seaton. All right. And that brings us to our next category, which is the nature category. And I'll remind our members that this month um, and November coming up, uh, the category is expanded to include the um, depiction of an in intersection of nature and human civilization. It's not required, it's just allowed, which is not typically allowed in our traditional nature category. So the first image is all in a day's work, and the critique is from Chris. Now, when I looked at this image at first, I'm like, that is the, the, the most perfect complementary colors, you know, the yellow blue um, to really direct us uh, to the subject. Um, I commented on a lot of people's images and I believe this is legal. Um, I said with, with moderate dodging and burning, going back to the origins of photography, um, I, I would have just pushed the shoulders or the sides of this image back a little bit, in other words, darkening it, um, just to allow us to focus more uh, on um, this, this bee um, that is laden with pollen. Um, I love the position of the image. Um, I, I, I feel a couple images in, in the in the tonight's show, we're so dead center. I feel like we're shooting a gun. And, and this one, I, I love I love the place. I love that the, the, that the bee is upside down. So I kind of move in this um, uh, counterclockwise um, oval throughout the photograph. Um, I, I if, if the shoulders were just a little bit darker, um, I would have given it an even higher score, but I gave it an eight. Okay, hey, thank you. Ola and Day's work scored 20. That's 2 0. All right. <clears throat> Our next image is Big Sky. The critique is from Judith. Um, and of course, this is the first image in expanded nature that I've ever judged. And um, I love the composition that center road is so dominant. I mean, it brings you right down to the sky. However, the ins and outs of the focus allow you, the eye to wander. I look at that fence line and I think, okay, that is, a human did that. And then I look over to the left and I say, that looks more like nature, just raw nature taking over. Um, it's a striking image. Uh, the only thing that bothered me a little bit was the motion in the sky. It didn't seem, I couldn't connect between the motion in the sky and the stillness of the, um, the rest of the image. So I, I'm not sure about that, but I thought it was well done, well exposed. Uh, I like how the sharpness is right at your foot when you go to step in. It's lovely. Okay, thank you. Big Sky scored 23. Our next image is Fallen Leaves. The critique is from George. Well, I love the composition and I love the color. Um, it, it is um, possibly a cliche in the world of photography to um, 
do aerial photos of fallen leaves um, in, in various composition forms. Um, the thing that was uh, interesting about this photo is that the leaves are, um, they have this dirty feel. You know, you, you see these photos of leaves, uh, fall, fall leaves that have fallen on the ground and they're so pristine. Th these leaves are um, rather raw. And uh, again, another image that I would love to have just seen a bit more pop, particularly in the reds in the center. Okay, thank you. Uh, fall and leaf scored 22. Our next image is fern fronds. And this is critiqued from by Chris. If I could uh, show this to a friend of mine, Roy Patience, he would he would somehow wrangle a ladybug into it. But um, <laughs> I, I know that's against the rules. I, I love I loved how the background was pushed back. Um, you know, it, the rendering of the background, you know, it's it's dark, it's moody. Um, yet we have these three, and three is a special number, uh, uh, arch was coming out into the photograph. If I was going to judge this on a technical merit, um, I, I would point out that the lower two, the tips go out of focus. And when they go out of focus, the contrast changes. And when the contrast changes, the density and the color changes. And, and to me, I think I think that could have been uh, perfected because if it was, I think it would just make it uh, an even more special photograph. The top, the top, the top leaf um, was was rendered just spot on. It's the lower two that just just might have missed it just a little bit, um, and and so it's it's a it's a technical is, issue for me. It's not a composition. It's not it's it's. Just, I think we could do a little bit better on that. So I gave it an eight. Okay, thank you. Uh, Fern Franz scored 23. Our next image is headshot, a critique from Judith Barrett. Well, it certainly is a headshot. Um, a portrait of a gorilla nicely placed in the frame. Um, however, I get the sense that the maker removed whatever was interfering with the gorilla in spots. Um, and when they've done that, if they did, there's a lot of uh, green and magenta coming through, which is not natural to the gorilla. I do really like the way they've made the background recessed and um, the expression on the gorilla. I mean, he looks kind of pouty. Um, he's, um, I think with work, this could be quite a stunning portrait. Okay, thank you. Headshot scored a 20, that's two zero. Our next image is Hello There, critique from George. Yeah, I mean, I hate to say this, but it, this is a pretty ordinary photo. Um, it's a pelican, looks a little distressed. Um, and uh, I, you know, I, I would love to have seen the pelican's eyes or, I mean, obviously with wildlife, you're gonna get what you get, especially when you're shooting out in nature. Um, and, um, I would, uh, say to the photographer, you know, go, go out and spend days photographing pelicans and then let's see what you can do. Cause I think there's a better picture here. Okay. Thank you. Hello there. Scored 20. That's two zero. Next image is I was sleeping. The critique from Chris. Boy, you know, it's 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 kind of special that you were able to to, to see and find uh, an owl. I I've, I've I I I I've only seen him in barns and down down by the salt in the sea when they're sitting out on a fence post. But you know, to me, um, I, I love the way that the background was handled. But I almost feel that some of these nature photographs um, are almost like push pins in a 
in a in, in a museum, I would give a little bit more space around them. You know, when if I'm going to photograph somebody dancing, I want to see the. I always say I want to see the whole dance. I want to see the feet. I want to see the background. I want to see a little bit of the band. And if I could have, you know, you know, thirty-three percent more space on on the right-hand side where the owl was looking, I would feel a little bit more comfortable. I, I feel I feel cramped. Um, and and I know I you know we got these long lenses and we like to show the proudness of our glass and how we can fill the frame. Um, but I think if we pulled back a little bit and saw a little bit more because the background's so beautiful the way it falls off the light um and if we pulled back a little bit we probably could have pulled the focus because the tail feathers in the foreground go go a little bit soft um uh, but i still think it's a, it's a, an amazing shot you know we're, we're down below looking up the point of view puts the puts the bird in a in a superior position um and i i i gave it a a seven Hey, thank you. I was sleeping scored at 20. That's two zero. Our next image is Manly Beacon, the critique from Judith. Composition here is like perfect in my mind. But what struck me right off the bat when I looked at the foreground was it looks like plastic. It doesn't look like rock. Um, and uh, maybe the, the maker was going for a more painterly effect, which would be, be beautiful. I think you could also take this to an extreme and make this a gorgeous abstract. But right now, it just kind of wrinkles my feathers that it's I want to see that texture in those rocks, those crumblies, and the colors are beautiful. I love the yellows playing with the blues. Um, I just would like to see it. Maybe I would love to see the raw file on this and see what the maker did to create this look. All right. And I'm Thank not you. telling any scores, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> There's We're no requirement. Oh, I don't care. Nope. You not required. Not no no restrictions. You get no restrictions, to, you get right. to say whatever you want. <laughs> Almost. Almost. Um, right. Manly Beacon scored 19. All right. Our next image is Mates, Mates for Life. George, this is for your critique. Yeah, beautiful photo <clears throat> of uh, swans on the lake. Um, the um, texture and some of the feathers here on the left are uh, blown out. Um, and uh, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more technical prowess there on uh, evening out the, the, uh, the tones on the feathers. Uh, the right seems to be a little better. Um, yeah, be, uh, you know, it's a nice photo. Um, it is, or, what, you know, I hate to use the word ordinary, but it is. Um, and uh, again, God knows what you can do when you spend a, a full day waiting for the swans to get in the right position. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, Mates for Life scored 21. Okay, our next image is Nature's Mosaic, critique from Chris. When I first looked at this, it, it reminded me of uh, almost it reminded me of looking at a painting in a museum. Um, and, and when I thought of that, whether or not it's, it's, it's actually um, arranged by man or not, I, I don't really care. I, I found it intriguing, but I felt like it was handled like a, like a painting in the museum uh, and somebody walked up and took a photograph of it. And when I, when I photographed, paintings in museums, I try to put a photographic spin on it. I try to put an interaction of people in the museum, uh, an interaction of a ray or a shaft of light in a museum. And, and I think if you know, a shaft of light could have come in here or something, instead of just a perfect document. Um, but 
in a perfect document, we would be able to pull the depth of field. And in the upper left-hand corner, um, we really start to uh, go out of focus. And, and to me, that's, that's bothersome to me. So um, on its technical merit alone, I'm gonna have to say, we need more depth of field or it needs to be sharper or something like that. So I gave it a six. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nature's most mosaic scored 18. Next image is Oaks in Spring. And this critique is from Judith. Well, it does certainly feel like spring with all of that green in the image. Um, and I feel like I've seen this oak tree several times. It has such beauty and grace and flow. Um, I can see where why photographers are, are driven to this site. Um, I think it's that great balance. It, um, ha it has kind of a nice peak at the center top and the sky looks like it had, like it's radiating, which I think adds to that feel of spring and freshness. The only thing I would suggest is maybe putting a linear gradient or doing some brushwork to tone down the highlights on this diagonal in, in the lower part of the image. Otherwise, I think it's um, quite nice. Hey, thank you. Oaks in Spring scored a 21. The next image is On the Water, critiqued by George. You know, I love lily pads. I love ponds. I love everything that goes on in in uh, in these environmental settings. And uh, you know, it's, this is a lovely photo. I would have loved to seen uh, just a bit more uh, dropout uh, on the edges, uh, just taking it down, ton toning it down, so that the focus really moves to those um, blooms. Um, looks like maybe the cropping could have been a little tighter off the top too but you know nice nice photo we could have seen a little bit more green come up on the leaves uh, but uh, other than that it's 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 very nice okay thank you on the water scored 20 that's two zero okay our next image is pine growth speak critique from chris When I, when I look at some of these bird shots, I, I am, I'm fascinated that you were able to, to capture them. Um, to, to me, I wouldn't change anything about this, about the positioning or the, or the photograph of the bird. I, I, I think it's a wonderful profile. I, I enjoy, yeah, it's got something in its beak. I think technically it's dark. I think it's slightly underexposed. Um, and again, I'm a person that I would want more space on the right hand side, you know, to where the bird's looking, just just so it's not so centric. Um, I wouldn't change anything. I just I just want a little bit more real estate uh, on the right hand side, just to you know to pull some negative space over here to allow the prominence of the bird to, to come through. It's got this wonderful diagonal. Uh, environment that's that's opening up uh, from above bringing us down to the bird so because it's slightly dark really i it's why i gave it um an eight hey thank you uh, pine gross peak scored 22. so this is rural um rural mexico and the critique is from judith well this is another one that i upon first looking i said oh this has got to have a real strong story somewhere with the crosses in the foreground and then the repeating cross on the building and that window or doorway in the, in the building that leads to space behind it, as well as the fog um, giving you kind of that feel of death and decay. 
and that life is just sort of disintegrating. Um, I think it's a fascinating image and I could see it in uh, a company with a story about rural Mexico. Um, but like I said, I struggled with it being in the category. I'm still having trouble with that. But I really enjoy the image overall. Um, my eye just keeps searching for all the little details. And I'm thinking, what was life like that um, when there were actual people living there? So I think the maker did a great job of capturing a feeling of place. Okay, thank you. Rural Mexico sc scored 19. Right, our next image is Seal Sanctuary. The critique is from George Rose. Yeah, I love this photo. Um, I know how hard it is to um, take pictures of wildlife. Um, I would have loved to have seen it crop up from the bottom just a touch. Um, but uh, the expression, the way the seal's lounging, um, you captured it and, uh, you know, possibly uh, just a touch too dark, uh, maybe a little lighter, but uh, yeah, good job. Okay, thank you. Seal Sanctuary scored 21. Next image is Skimmer, critique from Chris. Not only do I do I love the image, the technical skill to get this is just say you only took 10 pictures and this was just the first one. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, I spent two days photographing surfing and I like about four of them and I shot 6,000 photographs. So to see this, <laughs> I, I'm like, they, 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 they did an amazing job. Um, uh, you know, to me, implied movement, implied motion, I, I like things either coming into the frame or they're going so fast they're exiting the frame. Um, so if, if I, again, if I had my truthers, I would have just wanted more space behind its butt just to show me that the skimmer is in fact skimming. Um, and I can see, I, I can see its trail that it's, that its beak is making, but boy, I tell you what, the, the background handling, the, the exposure, the focus, uh, the, the direction of the light, the highlight and the eyeball all scream. This is a very, very nice shot. I gave it a nine. Okay, thank you. Skimmer scored 25. The next image is Spiny Beauty, critique from Judith. Well, it is spiny, that's for sure. And the colors work nicely together. Um, I think somewhere in here, there could be a very fascinating macro shot, getting in real close and getting those spines to just shoot out at you. Um, the separation from the background is good. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. Exposure. That seems right on. Nothing's blown out and uh, nothing's, well, I don't know about clipped because I don't really know what's in the background. It's, but um, that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Spiny Beauty scored 19. All right, and the next image is the Blackbird and the Green Jay, critique from George Rose. Well, this was my winner. I mean, you could spend a whole lifetime and not see two different birds having a battle in the sky. Um, the action is stopped. Exposure is good. Uh, possibly a little tighter. I mean, I, I, I think it could go either way. Background uh, up on the right, or excuse me, on the left um, could probably be brought down, but Boy, this is the epitome of action, nature, photography. Uh, whoever shot this, well done. It was one of my. It was my top uh, photo for critiquing. 
All right, thank you. The Blackbird and the Green Jay scored 27. All right, our next image is the chase critique from Chris. You know, to me, the, the, the action nature shots that we have tonight are just mind bending. I mean, obviously you've got the wildebeests fleeing. I love, I love the atmospheric perspective um, of the animals in the background. Not only is, does the haze increase the distance, it also uh, changes them from the, the, the chase to the observer, which I think is an interesting narrative. Uh, you know, to, to me, a photograph that can tell a story and, and here's one that can tell a story. You've got the prey, you've got the, the you know, the, the, the alpha, and, and then of course you've got uh, the audience. Um, I, I love all of it. You know, to, to me in post, I know you can't do it, but I just wanna move that stick in between the two wildebeest. So I, I, now I know how to dodge at pixel depth. So I would dodge it away. <laughs> but but to me, I, I love the action. I love I love the, the, the moment of fear and terror and, and, and witness of beauty. Nice, nice capture. And and you're only you know, you, you, you've eliminated all the distracting elements and just brought into the, the frame, the narrative itself. Um, I, I gave it a nine. I thought it was great. Okay, thank you. The chase scored 23. And I'll, I'll just clarify, since we're, we're experimenting with the idea of a, the expanded nature category, one of the allowances in expanded nature is the removal of minor elements that could be distracting. So uh, this is, this is a, a case where the uh, submitting member uh, might have been all right to take that that twig out out there. We're still just experimenting with what this looks like, mm -hmm. but I wanted to take a moment to share that. Our next image is Walk in the Aspens, and this is critiqued from Judith. This is such a beautiful scene. Um, I feel like it's fall and the maker's inviting me to just step on that path and walk all the way back through the woods and whatever lies beyond. The um, color, complementary colors of the yellows and oranges and blues are just perfect. Um, the side light defining the um, trees, or maybe call it rim light, um, really makes the trees stand out more from one another. Uh, I might suggest, I see the, the maker did put some kind of a vignette or burnt down the corners in the foreground. I could see it coming up and um, you can't see my finger moving, can you? <laughs> uh, darkening just slightly the brighter spot on the left, midway up. Um, but overall, I would love to take a walk there. It's lovely. Okay, thank you. Walk in the Aspens scored 22. The next image is winter foraging, a critique from George. Yeah, I love this photo. I, you know, I've spent a lot of time actually in the snow photographing bighorn. And I know how difficult it is. I know how cold you can get. Um, the challenges of winter nature photography are tenfold. Um, and uh, he, uh, the expression on his face, he's got a little something in his mouth he's chewing on. The snow is coming down. It's, it's just, it's a beautiful photo. Um, and I, I would have taken down, uh, just burned in slightly the whites of his butt um, <laughs> because you want you want your eye to go right to his face uh, but well done okay thank you winter foraging score 23 and the next image is yep i'm going to be a big tusker critique from chris you know one of the things i love about some photographs is it 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 leads you down a path. I had to go learn some terms. 
I had to learn that the, the, the female who's in charge of the herd is called the matriarch. I had to learn that the, that the boys typically don't live and they're called the bulls. And this is, this is a younger, a younger juvenile um, sowing his oats. Um, but the, the one thing, the one thing I, I, I always try to, to remind everybody is the point of view of the camera and the point of view of the viewer. Um, and I just, I just feel that we're looking down upon this juvenile and I wish, I wish the camera was a little bit lower so we could look it up, look up at it. Yes, I know it's a small guy, but I, I want to show him being, you know, authoritative. Um, and so I, I would have, I would have brought the POV down um, either by kneeling or holding the camera down at, at, at the waist just to elevate the stature a, a little bit. It seems, it seems a little rushed um, and, and with, with the foreground being a, a little out of focus or if it is supposed to be selective focus, I'd select the focus uh, and throw the back out a little bit. Um, so because, because of those, uh, I, I gave it a six. Okay, thank you. Yep, I'm going to be a big Tusker scored 18. So for the nature category, we have 12 accepted images, starting with the big sky by Greg Smith, Fallen Leaves, Zoltan Pushkash, Fern Franz, Ron Abels, Mates for Life, Stephen Sherrill, Oaks in Spring, Ken Pfeiffer, Pine Grosbeak, Bruce Straits, Seal Sanctuary, Pat Birdsell, Skimmer, Ron Williams, the Blackbird and Green Jay, John Stupnagel, The Chase, Jeff Lipschitz, Walk in the Aspens, George Wellick, and Winter Foraging, Scott Vahey. All right. That brings us to the open category. The first image here is entitled Approaching Storm. The critique is from Judith. Well, it certainly likes it's going, looks like the storm is just coming on fast and furiously. Um, I like the way they, by giving the sky all the room, they've given the sky the power it needs. I would like to have it maybe accent it a little bit more, making more contrast uh, in the clouds. And um, I can't find anything else I really would do to correct this because I like the way it's framed up and uh, I feel like I'm standing there watching, watching the storm come in. Okay, thank you. Approaching sc storm scored 23. All right, our next image is going to be for comments only. Um, this is called Change of Seasons and we'll, more about it after the, um, after the comments, which come from George Rose. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure how I was supposed to take this uh, as a as a single image or an image that's been created as a wall hanging. Um, I mean, you have two very diverse images within the actual three images that are that I'm seeing here in this. Um, I, I didn't quite know what to uh, or how to take it. Uh, I love the, the abstract motion movement image on the left um, and then the leaves on the right are very mysterious um, uh, and then this background image i'm not sure uh, what that is but um, i was a little perplexed but i like it 
All right, and so the backstory here is that this image was um, submitted um, inadvertently with the same image on the on the right as the earlier image, Fallen Leaves, um, and that, mm. that's not allowable. It was a, a mistake by the submitter, and as a result, uh, we discovered it too late to, uh, was in the, the judging, um, so we just went ahead and had the judges uh, provide scores and this, but we're not gonna share the scores and this is a, an ineligible um, uh, uh, image. It could be resubmitted later with a different picture on the right if the maker chose to do so. So our next image is Deltopia and the critique is from Chris. Those of you who know me, I, I love the, the study and observation of humanity. Uh, to, to me, uh, it, showing images like this allows the viewer to fill in and complete the narrative I, I love the camera position. It's down below pointing up. The key subject is featured with a white t-shirt. Um, so, so, so we've, 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 got the, we've got the narrative, uh, but we can't forget about the figure ground relationship. And to have the telephone pole coming directly out of his head to me is distracting. If it was off to the right or to the left, it, it wouldn't matter. But since it's coming out of his head, to, to me, backgrounds are just as important as the subject itself. Um, and, it, and it just kind of pulls away from that for me. So what was the name of this skin? Deltopia. 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 So I gave, I, I gave it an eight for the, for the telephone pole. And I find it so fascinating that everybody gives their image titles. I don't like titles. I give locations or scientific names. Uh, because to me, I go back to the painting Pissed Christ, you know, how much a title influences the viewer. Um, but I appreciate, I mean, I know it's Deltopia, but people might not know what that means. And, and that can be, a, that can be a struggle as well as a helping hand. So. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Deltopia scored 21. Next image is Dewey Yellow Trillium, critique from Judith. Well, um, I enjoy these bright, bright colors and the yellow playing off the blue, the um, composition forming a triangle going from the outsides to the center um, is flattering. The the f-stop chosen gives a nice blur to the background. I would like to see a little de more detail in the flower petals. Otherwise, I think it is a pleasant looking image. Maybe I'd crop it down a little bit from the top, just a little. I like to move in close. <laughs> Not like Chris, who likes expanded views. <laughs> I'm I'm always getting down. Oh, let's crop this to the center. Um, anyway, it 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 had some shocking colors that worked beautifully. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dewey Yellow Trillium scored eighteen. The next image is the end of a great day. Critique from George. Yeah, this is a wonderful photo because timing is everything. Position and timing combine, really uh, combine to create great uh, imagery. And, um, you know, the jets flying in their starburst over an old World War II plane, um, obviously an air show. Uh, what can I say? It's, it's well done. Hey, thank you. End of a great day, score 24. The next in, in, uh, image is Fall Drive, the critique from Chris. You know, we always strive to find those sensual S curves and, and you found one and you found one during backlit fall colors. I mean, it's like the, the coup de gras. I mean, I wanna see a blue Jeep driving down the middle, down the middle of the road because this this is this is the perfect advertising spot, you know. Um, but but 
the time of day, the backlit, backlit leaves, the, sen the sensual S curve on the road. I think those are all, you know, wonderful, wonderful finds. Um, I would tell a location scout, I'd sell them this location because um, I, I think it's, it's beautiful and, and you found it and you cropped it and you framed it uh, quite well. It would be fun to experiment around with, with seeing a person on a bicycle, a person on a motorcycle, a person in a car, um, you know, uh, an Airstream trailer as, as it comes in with a new Ford electric pickup truck. All those cliches, I think, could, could all be used here. So nice job. Nice job. Hey. Eight. Forgive me. All right, thank you. End of a great day scored 20, oh, excuse me, fall drive scored 21. And the next image is feeling down the critique from Judith. Um, I, I enjoyed this image because it caught, captured a moment of distress and the colors, pretty much indicate that it probably was taken in India. Um, possibly the photographer was walking by and saw this on the street, uh, from the street. I, I wish there had been a little more expression, especially on the guy on the far right. He looks um, like he's just waiting for that bandage to be done so they can move off. But I think the inverted triangle is nice with the three heads balanced well. Um, I just maybe I would what I'd really like to have is a story about what's wrong with that man's face. What happened to him? Is it a bad tooth or did he get hit? Um, it is, it's an interesting story. Okay, thank you. Feeling down scored 19. Our next image is fire line, do not cross. Critique from George Rose. Well, uh, there's a lot going on in this image and um, I'm loving the black and white, by the way, uh, throughout the entire uh, selection of images. I'm, I'm, I like seeing black and white. I used to love working in black and white. Um, and uh, interesting composition with the handprints up in the left-hand corner, the dirty sink, <laughs> the caution tape. I mean, this is a train wreck of a photo. Something has happened here. I have no idea, but it's a fun image. Um, yeah, fun, that's a good word. Okay, thank you. Uh, fire line, do not cross score 25. Next image is flying car, critique from Chris. I, I love the strong diagonal, um, you know, the, 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 way, the way it pulls us down uh, with, with this forced perspective of the car being larger in the front versus in the background. But, but I, would, I would try to switch spatial relationships. Um, our eyes go, tend to go to the lightest and brightest area and my eye goes to the light on the ceiling. Um, I think in post, you could just push that down and bring up the car um, and bring the car into the foreground, just, just in terms of exposure uh, and, and push that light, uh, that light back. Um, I think this is at that amazing car museum in, in Oxnard that you never would know exists. Um, and it's exciting to see, but because of those two relationships of, of the exposure um, I, I had to had to pull back on this in terms of the score I gave it, um, and I can't. I think I gave it a seven. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Thank you. Yeah. A uh, flying car scored twenty two. Our next image is gliding on the Arno. Critique from Judith. Well, I actually um, have been not on the Arno, but near near the town and I love Italy. And I think the buildings in the background, the colorful shutters, um, the tile roofs, they really capture the essence of the place. Unfortunately, 
the people in the gondola in the foreground are soft and out of focus. I think the beautiful shot would be to wait till they pass and make the blue boat part of the subject and have it play against the colorful top. Um, and you could slow down your shutter and, and let the water become more abstract. I think uh, it would be one heck of a, a great image. This is a nice image, but I think um, the boat in the foreground just distracts my eye. Okay, thank you. Gliding on the Arno scored 19. Our next image is Granada, a critique from George Rose. Well, I love the abstract nature of, of being probably or practically on the ground looking up. Um, the uh, wispy clouds give an air of mystery to this and the um, white stucco, I'm assuming this is the Granada Theater. Um, it, it is, um, it's an interesting view to say the least. Um, I, I don't know if, what, what happened to the sky. Uh, it, should it have been bluer probably? Uh, that would have made this white pop a little better, um, but uh, definitely an interesting angle, especially when you get down on your back and look up. Okay, thank you. Uh, Granada scored 22. Our next image is Landmark Framed, the critique from Chris Broughton. I thought it was, it was a pretty fascinating observation and, of course, uh, play with perspective. Um, it took me a while to orient myself <laughs> to figure out what, what I was looking at. And then I realized I was looking in the storefront uh, window of a reflection um, of, of this magnificent facade. Uh, the one thing I, I, do, I do think a lot of images could, could go over the top, and that's just the inclusion of, of a human. And I, I so wanted them to be in that little little space of light at the bottom of the church on the right hand side of the frame you know the silhouette of a priest or or a nun i mean it's just like i i just i just want that little that that little nugget but besides that i i, th I thought it was a wonderful observation and a pretty pretty nice technical achievement so uh, i gave it an eight okay thank you a landmark framed Scored 22. Our next image is Looking Up, critique from Judith. I love this image. I think it is spectacular. Um, I will say I gave it a nine uh, because I think the skill it takes to create this image with so much detail and yet have that water so beautifully smooth and the lights um, have those star formations. I think it's perfect. I don't see one thing I could improve upon. Well done. All right, thank you. Looking up score 25. Our next image is Marina Reflection, a critique from George. Well, this is an image that has a lot of potential. Um, I think the issue that I had with it is the framing. Um, I, I look at, at, at uh, the fencing, uh, the pylons, um, and I, I wonder, you know, really, do I, do I want to focus on that one big giant uh, pylon that's coming right through the middle of the image? Would I lo have loved to have seen a much better detail, possibly with a different lens? of the fence or the, or the smaller pylons. Um, this could have been improved, um, I think, through framing and a little bit of thought. Um, so uh, to whoever shot this, I'd say, go back out and look at these reflections a little differently. All right, thank you. Marina Reflection scored 19. Our next image is Morro Bay Sunset, critique from Chris. 
You know, to me, if I could go back to a quote I heard from Keith Carter, he said, out of focus is just as much a part of photography as focus is. Um, I love the abstract nature of this. I think, you know, in a contemporary home, a four foot by eight foot metal print of this on a white bare wall would, would be beautiful. Um, I do see some strange texturing going on and I'm not quite sure what that is. I, I would get rid of it. Um, I would, and, and, I, and it's there and, and it's more prominent on the right hand side than the left hand side. So maybe just throw a Gaussian blur over it just to, to finish it off. Um, when, it's, when it's a little bit smaller, it's a teeny bit dark on the left hand side, but I, I, I love things that are out of focus and I love things that are sharp. It's, it's, it's the things that fall in between um, that usually uh, does it, doesn't work for me. So um, uh, this is called, what was it called again? Morrow Bay Sunset. Morrow Bay Sunset. Um, I gave it an eight. Okay, thank you. Morrow Bay Sunset scored 22. Our next image is Oops, and the critique is from Judith. Well, this is the first time I think I've been in club six years that I've seen a photograph done like this. Now, I know people do this exploding watermelons and whatnot. I can only guess how it's happened. I mean, there has to be a flash and other um, support lightings, which wit lights, which I think were handled beautifully. Um, I do wonder if it's all one image or if pieces have been added. It doesn't matter to me, but I think it's, it certainly gets a lot of attention and it makes me want to stop and examine it. And I think that's important for an image. You don't just walk by this. You look and you search and, oh, is it duplicated anywhere? No. And I love the um, way it's framed out. I do see a little bit of light in the background, um, which maybe could be burnt down a bit because I don't think it needs any detail in the background at all. I'd get rid of that the um, that life because it's a little distracting. But wow, the maker's going to have to give me a lesson on how to do this. Okay, thank you. Oops, scored 22. Ah. Oh. And our next image is Outstanding in My Field, critique from George Rose. Well, who doesn't love colorful tulips? Um, this is a, a rather ordinary image. It's nice that um, the photographer has a red tulip to stand against all those yellows. Would love to have seen a little bit more focus on uh, or tighter, bring it in tight. Um, or actually, uh, the opposite is true, uh, back it up further um, and see if that one red tulip stands off in a much larger field of yellow. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's pretty much a standard, a standard photo of tulips. Okay, thank you. Outstanding in my field scored 20, that's two zero. too many next one is still life critique from chris boy I tell you what you want to challenge yourself go after what the masters painted um and and that's where the bar is uh, i i love the idea of of, of still life um, but i want to remind everybody the reason most food is shot from above is so you don't have to deal with the transition from the tabletop to the background and I think I can see something in the background. It's either some slat, some 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 wood, or 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 a drape um, that appears to be removed in post. Um, and I think their monitor might be too contrasty because I can definitely see into the shadows. The other thing too, um, I, I 
I, I kind of have a trouble with is, is the banana of choice. It's a little bit beaten. Um, and, and I, I would have, I would have just, just cleaned that up, uh, but nice attempt. Um, but look at the masters, look at, look at the painted, uh, fruit, uh, the pears, the apples, um, the, the bowls and, and the vases that are in there. Um, and this is what you're going up against. The, the, the quality of light is there, but I think the rest of the follow through needs practice. And that's, and that's what we're here for. So I gave it a six. Okay, thank you. Still life scored 17. Next image is three sheets to the wind. Critique from Judith. This is certainly an unusual image. Um, and I find it uniquely cropped to accent at the last minute that this photographer caught that arm of the human going out like that. Well, I guess those other two people are human too, but they look more like statues to me. Um, I think this angle gives a real good sense of verticality. Uh, toning wise, it's, it's great. Um, and it makes me question. So I think that's all good. And I, I played with different crops, but I couldn't improve it. Uh, I also wonder about the background. I, I don't know if it's a sky. It, it seems to be a lit, little bit posterized. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on there, but it's not enough to really distract from this very <laughs> unique capture. Okay, thank you. Three sheets to the wind scored to 20. That's two zero. Next image is three zebras. And the critique is from George. <laughs> Well, I, I, I keep thinking, what if? What if all of these zebras um, had turned their heads and looked toward the camera? Uh, what a dynamic photo that would be. Um, uh, so perhaps this should be titled Zebra Indifference. I don't I mean, they're, <laughs> um, I, who doesn't love zebras? <laughs> In fact, Santa Barbara County has its own zebra running loose. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I would have just waited uh, a little longer to see what would have happened, but uh, yeah, good, good zoo photo. Okay, thank you. Three zebra scored 17. Next is tree dance, critique from Chris Brown. Uh, I have a friend whose name's Adam Gerlach, uh, and uh, he's been doing photographs of trees at night. Uh, mainly their uh, trees in parks and uh, in city locations, um, so in urban landscapes, and he uses available light, and then he goes up into the, to the White Mountains, and he's been painting with light some of the ancient bristlecone pines. And, and this reminded me of his work. Um, it has a very interesting, haunting feeling to it. Um, but, but to me, it's just, it's just the focus that just pulls me away from it. Now, I don't think this one qualifies as the out of focus picture. This is kind of the in between and it's the in between that it's, it, it seems not intentional enough. Um, and, and that to me, it, to me is, is distracting from the, for really the haunting beauty maybe that could be created um, at, at, with this interesting, um, you know, illuminated tree at night. So we, we need to work on our focus. So I gave it a five. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, thank you. Uh, Tree Dance scored 13. Our next image is Under the Pier, the critique from Judith Barrett. This is a gorgeous image. And I really want to commend the photographer for thinking about what they want to say with the photograph. Um, it doesn't come easy. It's not just, oh, that's good looking. The water is smooth enough without being boring. It has 
detail, slight detail, enough to give it interest. And the way the light is playing off, the, the lights, the gold lights onto the water next to the blues and purples, um, absolutely gorgeous. The focus, and I, I don't know if it was focus stacked or, well, it seems to be focus stacked maybe because it seems to be sharp all the way down to down the pier, but I can't find one single thing that I would improve upon. I, well, maybe, okay, maybe that little tiny bit of rock in the foreground, maybe I'd remove that, but it's it's not a biggie. It's, this, I think this is a stunning piece of work, very artistically thought out, as well as technically. I gave it a nine. Okay, thank you. Under the peer score 25. So for the open category, we have 13 accepted images. Approaching Storm, Ron Abels. Deltopia, Carrie Topliff. End of a Great Day, Bill Hallier. Fall Drive, Scott Behe. Fireline, Do Not Cross. Bill Banning. Flying Car, Ron Williams. Granada, Bob Rottenberg. Landmark Framed, Ellen Clark. Looking Up, Greg Smith. Morrow Bay Sunset, Chris Seaton. Oops, George Wellick. And Under the Pier, Stuart Wilson. All right, that's the end of the open category. We have the people category coming up next. And the first one is Andy's Man, and the critique is George Rose. I, you know, th this is a beautiful portrait. Um, the color, the tone, um, dropping out the background. Um, I, I, you know, I have to assume that the, uh, this was taken on a trip um, down to the Andes, but the lighting is almost as if you brought your if you brought your your own umbrella or softbox um, and uh, set it on portraiture. It's it's just a, a stunning image, and the color is really what makes this a, a photo pop. Well done. Okay, thank you. Andy's man scored 22. Our next image is Discovery, the critique from Chris. You know, to me, this this is the kind of space I like. I like to see, I like to see this negative space balanced off this wonderful, wonderful subject. Um, you know, th they handle the background very well. Uh, in other words, it transitions out. We, we don't have to worry about the horizon line. Um, if, if I had to be ultra critical, I just wish the child's face would have been a little bit more in profile and, and not looked, uh, not looked away from the camera. Um, and, and maybe if you could, you know, make the zebras look, we can make this little kid not necessarily look, but just turn his face just to a, a little bit to the left so we can bring it, bring in the beautiful profile. Um, so nice job. Nice job. Okay, thank you. Discovery scored 20, that's two zero. Next is Feeding My Friends, critique from Judith. I looked at this lady and I felt so emotional that these birds really did mean something to her. You know, she probably feeds them regularly and um, so I think the, the maker captured a beautiful moment. Um, it's nicely exposed. However, when, I don't know if the maker was trying to remove something around 
uh, the woman, but there's kind of holes or where, where she disappears. And I don't know if it's a masking issue, um, but I think if you were careful with that and then tone down the white sock, because that just, it's sort of like a headlight and I go right to it when there's so many beautiful aspects of, and, and relationship between the birds and that woman and the way she's holding the food. Um, I think the photographer captured a great moment, but I, I think if he went and reworked the lighting or the um, masking, the burning in and dodging down or dodging down, burning down and dodging up, I, I think um, this could be quite an emotional, tender portrait. Okay, thank you. Feeding My Friends scored 18. Next image is iconic, the critique from George. I love this portrait of this young man. Um, standing in front of a church, the hair coming down across his face with the uh, what looks to be a puka shell or some kind of a little shell. Um, beautiful, spontaneous, great smile, full of life. Um, light sky around uh, the back in the background doesn't bother me a bit. Good job. All right, thank you. Iconic scored 20, that's 2-0. Next image is Isla, critique by Chris Broughton. You know, if you ever wanted to know how to create an ethereal looking image, I think this one nails it right on the, uh, the head. I mean, I, I love the processing, you know, the, the, the high key cyan, um, almost, you know, model-esque type uh, approach to a child's portrait. And then of course, we're looking up where the point of view is, is making them large, larger than life. Um, if, I, if I had to had to do anything, I would experiment out with retouching the small little, probably camera lens in the middle of her pupil. It might be horrible. It might be interesting. Um, it, it, it would just maybe, move the the purity of the innocence and remove the camera uh, itself but i i thought this was like and and i know i said i don't like the cropping i don't like it tight i love this tight i wouldn't change anything about it very nice job okay thank you isla scored 24 next image is kayak fisher critique from judith barrett all right. Um, from the title, I'm getting the impression that this is all about the man in the boat, in the kayak. But I find the foreground, whether it was bush or whatever, or, or mist or fog, I don't, which I don't think it was, but um, to me, it takes so much away from the image that I don't want to stay there and look longer. It's, I've lost interest in it. And um, I'm sorry, but that's how I feel. And think, and think when maybe, maybe the maker could have come up higher. Um, it, it seems like it's probably in pretty good focus. And I do question when you look between the rod, the two rods in the back, there's a light strip between the two. And it's a, um, there's a very blue tone to it. And I'm not sure why it's there and not everywhere. I, I don't understand the processing behind this, but I think it, it could have um, 
had a better hand in post-processing. Okay, thank you. Kayak Fisher scored 16. Our next image is Laundress critique from George Rose. Well, I love this. Uh, again, uh, another wonderful black and white image. Um, there's a little bit of processing that could have uh, been used in this uh, to really make this uh, pop uh, possibly a little tighter cropping off the left and maybe a little on the right. Um, and then darkening the image overall and then bringing her face up and her arm up just a little bit so that we see more detail. I don't know what this, uh, there's somebody in the, <laughs> off of her left, there's a, a person standing in there. Um, if you believe in Photoshop, that would have been easy to take out because it's a little distracting. But this is a, a very uh, beautiful photojournalistic image. Uh, good job. Okay, thank you. Laundress scored 21. Our next image is Museum Musings. Critique from Chris. You know, one of my favorite things to do is, is to, to photograph people observing art um, and, and, but include the art in the photograph. And I think they've, they've done such a wonderful job here. I, I love the juxtaposition. Um, I love the play on the, the marble versus the dark clothing. Um, I, the only thing I find, find interesting is, is the camera position and, and where the horizontal of the room is. And I don't know if, if bringing the camera down a little bit or up a little bit would have changed that. Um, but but, I, but I, I, I just love the use of black and white the use of the black floor, the, the, the kind of almost religious white walls of the museum. And then, of course, the, the marble statue is illuminated uh, either by spotlight or dapple light coming through the skylight. So nice job. And, and it's fun, the expression. It's fun to see the expression of the observer reading the art on the wall. You know, they're reading, they're reading and they're not looking at any of the art which I also find a kind of one of the things I love to look at. So very nice job. Okay, thank you. Museum Musings scored 23. Next image is, uh-oh, lion coming, critique from Judith. Well, we know the lion didn't get the maker of the photograph. Um, <laughs> and I would imagine the, um, the maker got a lot of, images that were in focus that showed the real beauty of the area. Although I like their priority of making cocktails. I think I find that a, a real plus. <laughs> but um, yes, I, it feels like maybe the maker was on the run because of the lion and it was a quick sh shot with a flash and let's get out of there. But I, I, the, the, the lack of focus dis, is distracting to me. Okay, thank you. Oh, oh, Lion Cummings scored 15. Next is on second thought, critique from George. A uh, good decisive moment. And you know, those decisive moments come every moment. And uh, he's, the photographer is in position to catch this. Um, I, I could see a little bit of help up there in the upper right hand corner if you would burn this down a little bit more so that we had more focus on that uh, exuberant face. Um, good action shot. Uh, well done. Okay, thank you. On second thought scored 20. That's 2-0. Next is partied out. Chris, uh, a critique from Chris. To me, obviously, this is this is a theatrical performance capture, um, or at least it appears to be. Um, you know, with 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 the, with the stage lighting, uh, the dark background. Besides a documentation of this, I, I I wish I wish I could see a little bit more of the narrative, um, and and I don't know if 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 there was more that that could actually have been included. I, you know, shooting theater is is really difficult because of the minimalistic approach to uh, the stage uh, by a lot of uh, performances. Um, I mean, 
I feel like I, I'm in the audience. I feel like I'm witnessing this, but I think I need a little bit more to complete the narrative for me. Okay, thank you. Party out scored 19. Next is Ramayana, critique from Judith. I had to look up what Ramayana was, the meaning of it. And I guess it's a historic figure from way, way back, um, sort of like a, a Gothic tale. And it's reenacted currently in um, different forms and at different stages in the story. There are many different versions. Now, aside from that, I appreciate the maker showing us some of the background and this beautiful woman on the left, but I think the main thrust of this image is this great guy with his hands stretched out and that, uh, I don't know, the streamers shooting out as well. He's, he's the star of the show. So I'd like to see the left side cropped out. You know, maybe you could keep um, part of the very beginning of the carriage and the horses in, and then just bring it straight up. But I, I really um, think the main character deserves to be a solo image. Okay, thank you. Ramayana scored 20, that's two zero. Next image is Surf Launch, critique from George. Well, we have the makings of a really great action photo. Um, unfortunately, the, the person is going away from us in this image. Um, and there's been some nice um, stop action on the wave, the colors off uh, a little bit, possibly we've, it, it's an overcast day. Um, and uh, it's, it's a, a pretty, uh, it's a pretty ordinary photo of somebody going out into the surf on a kayak. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. Surf launch scored 19. Next is the rigor critique from Chris. And to me, again, I love I love black and white. I love I love how how it brings out the textures. You know, I, I, I'm thinking old man in the sea. And we, we've we've got the beard. Um, it is in profile, but I'm always thinking figure ground. And and you know, to me, I'm, I see the mast, and I, and I don't know what that other thing is, but I, I see another aluminum vertical stay going up. I just kind of wish the camera would have moved to the right a little bit, and then he could have been between those two. Um, and, and we wouldn't have had that really hard uh, vertical line going directly behind his face. Um, you know, also, you know, to me, how, how you handle the background. Uh, they're, they're, you're down below, you're looking up. Um, I, I like the supporting elements, uh, but when you have that strong vertical coming behind his head, it is just a little bit distracting. I, I always think that, that, that I'm playing a game uh, when I'm taking a photograph, because I'm trying to fit that person in the background. Sometime go to the Getty and look at all the portraits on the, that are hanging that are paintings, but don't look at the paintings at all. Only look at how they painted the backgrounds. Because a painter paints a background because they have complete control over it. You have control by moving, changing your point of view, changing your focal length, and changing, moving in and out. Um, and, and I think sometimes moving to the right a foot is, is a difference between a good photograph uh, and, and, and a great photograph. All right, thank you. The rigor scored a 20, that's two zero. Next image is the scale of faith, critique from Judith. Clever title, seeing the, the church is so big and this gentleman is very tiny in the frame. However, I feel the photographer must, I, I do, I wonder how long the photographer was standing there waiting for someone to come into the scene 
and he, he captured the person, but he also captured him, him in mid stride, which I think is amazing. And the guy has a nice white hat that stands out. Um, this is technically really well done. And kudos to the photographer ha for having the patience to wait for that decisive moment. Okay, thank you. The scale of faith scored 23. So for the people category, we have five accepted images, starting with Andy's man, Bill Hallier, Isla Bob Rottenberg, Laundress Chris Seaton, Museum Musings, Deb Gibson, and the scale of faith, Bill Banning. All right, that brings us to our print category. The judges all received copies of prints and their scoring and comments are based on viewing them as prints. They didn't actually see them online until they got after they got them. So uh, we have three prints tonight. The first is Like a Storm in the Desert, critique from George Rose. You know, again, uh, some really great quality black and white imagery here in the club. Um, this is uh, everything that sums up global warming. <laughs> um, it's ugly and yet beautiful. And uh, I love uh, seeing it printed on this particular paper uh, uh, with this tonal quality. Um, obviously adds to the, uh, the drama and the urgency of the image. Contrast is really good, um, you know, beautifully printed, um, well done. All right, thank you. Like a storm in the desert scored 23. Next is Lily Obverse, critique from Chris Broughton. When I looked at the prints, um, it, it, it reminded me of, of a book that Joyce Tennyson did of flowers. Um, and, and when she did his book on flowers, she didn't photograph them, she scanned them all. Um, and they had a really interesting haunting ethereal quality because of the on axis lighting from the way the scanner bar works. But I thought this was this was right up there with 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 her work. The one thing that that I think this image could benefit from is a little bit more enhancement of dimensionality and and taking that main pedal with that vein that goes through the horizon and allowing that to be the main focus of the vision. And then just to push back the other lead pedals just slightly by darkening, I think would enhance the dimensionality of, of the image itself. Um, and in such an organic shape, there's that little round spot that I don't know if that's actually on the leaf um, or it's a piece of sensor dust. And here's the thing, I don't care what it is to me, it's distracting from this beautiful undulating horizontal line. So I would either remove it or dodge it. <laughs> Whatever is the legal thing to do, because I don't want to get anybody in trouble. So uh, push those leaves back and I, I, I gave it a seven. All right, thank you. Uh, Lily uh, Verse scored 19. Next print is Pacific Surfliner, critique from Judith. Wow, this just pops off the page. And the paper the maker chose to print on is perfect. It's, it's a glossy, and so it, it just comes a, more alive than it is already. The colors are so luscious and beautiful. It, it's a stunning capture along with the sense of motion and the train, you know, is just rounding the bend. I would have given it a nine, except I found dust spots. And I think <laughs> when, when you have this much skill at creating an image and printing it so beautifully, um, a second 
glance through for dust spots is a must. All right, thank you. Pacific Surfliner scored 25. So for the print category, we have two accepted images, Like a Storm in the Desert by Bill Banning and Pacific Surfliner by Ron Williams. All right, that will bring us to our unscored submissions. Um, before we do that, there are a couple of things we have to do. I just wanna let you know, we have a program night with Elliot Crawley coming up um, in two weeks. Our fourth Tuesday program at the end of the month is uh, all welcome for sharing assignments with streaks of creativity, tilt and directional light. And uh, our um, deadline for the July submission is Friday, June 24th. And here we go. Just the reminder, um, this never, uh, this is available on, on the club's uh, Flickr account. Zoom uh, is not a great place for showing video, but we allow our members to do these one minute snippets and here it is. Known as the queen of the coast, Rincon is a surfing mecca and one of the most famous point breaks in California. Surfers from around the globe come to this pristine stretch of sand along the Santa Barbara and Ventura County line and this laid back friendly vibe makes it a great spot for anyone to enjoy a little time at the beach. Just off Highway 101 at Bates Road, you'll find two parking lots. Turn left into Rincon Point State Park, where you're likely to see surfers, or turn right to enter the county park. With stunning bluff top views, it's a scenic spot for picnics and group gatherings. There's free parking and easy beach access from both parking areas. We like to walk around the point, past the river mouth, at low tide, look for tide pools where you just might spot a sea treasure or two. For more information on Rincon and to learn about other adventures along the Central Coast, go to SantaBarbaraScenic.com. We invite all of the judges to make comments after the video. Anybody have some anything to share? I would just say I think the color grading it, it looks a little cooked on a couple of the of the snippets. Um, it's a little hot. In other words, I think it, I think it, the exposure might be a little, a little too far. But I go to the Rincon almost every day, um, and it's 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 a wonderful a wonderful jewel of the South Coast. What's it called? The what? The Queen of the Coast. Um, but they need to get some. If they, if I you know, it's known for its big long waves, and. Uh, Get some of those in there. <laughs> yeah, and another note, I just want to thank, I, I mean, I just want to say, you know, this is great seeing so many wonderful black and white images in this collection. Uh, it's, um, <clears throat> I have a very fond memory of uh, working in black and white and spending my, most of my youth in a dark room. And uh, it, it's just incredible to see such great quality work. Thank you. And George, we're happy to have you on board as a, as a presenter previously and a, and a judge. Thank you for being here. Judith, well, any comments? I, yeah, well, not about the video, which I, I thought was informative. I've never been to Rincon and now I may go. Um, I'd like to encourage more people to volunteer to judge, um, club people, and especially women. It, even though it does scare me and I get nervous and uh, think, oh, I'm gonna blow it. Um, I've learned so much and it's really in, forces me to look very closely and think deeper when I look at all the images. And it's, it's really an amazing experience. So don't be afraid. Well, I'm gonna second. <laughs> I'm going to second that uh, that issue of of um, commenting and critiquing being a huge benefit in in um, maturing your own photography. So I, I would encourage anybody to let me or, or Stuart know that you're interested in, and would love to have more folks. All right. Well, that brings us to the end of our program for tonight. Um, Thanks again. We had almost 40 people in the room at one point earlier on today. It was a, a, a great showing and uh, 
Um, looking forward to seeing everybody uh, in two weeks for Elliot Crawley. And uh, yes. um, thanks for continuing to keep engaged with us at the Camera Club. Thank you, judges. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Great. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.